All right, so picking up where we left off, um, we just made the control curves and named them and put them in a group and then added them to a layer. Um, I noticed that my, let's see, I, I did not freeze the transformations on my control curves, so I need to do that. I need to get these back to 0, 0, 0 and 1, 1, 1. Um, so I'm going to select all those, modify, freeze transformations, and also I'm going to delete history, alt shift D. All right. So, it's also a good, good idea to save um, every few clicks because in rigging, you never know when something will just explode when you constrain it the wrong way. So, um, saving often is very good. So, I'm going to go ahead and move my IK group and control curves group into my Boxman's awesome leg complete group just so that everything is organized. I'll put the joints in there too. All right, and now, um, we, we're going to get into the constraining right now, actually setting up the rig. And it, uh, this is where it's kind of confusing, but if you do it correctly, it will really be benefit you later on to use the setup. Um, so I'm going to grab my left foot control and grab the left RF base. And I'm going to do a point constraint. Now, I use the hotbox a lot. This guy, um, the way that you get to this is you hold down spacebar and then you have to click on click and hold on every menu that you want. I'm gonna break off the constraint menu, which is in the animation menu set, because I'm gonna be using all of these constraints. When you use constraints, you avoid having to parent stuff in the outliner, and it um, I think it just makes it a little bit more organized, uh, easy to find things. Um, so we want to uh, with, with our left foot control and our left RF base selected, we want to do a parent constraint with the option box and do maintain offset. So click apply and we'll test it once just to see that it works. Yep, should fly around with it, rotate with it, which is good. All right, so now we want to start connecting the true joint chain to our reverse, the, yeah, sorry, true joint chain to the reverse foot joint chain. Is there because basically in the end, it's going to be like the, the left foot control will drive the reverse foot joint chain, which will drive the IKs on the true joint chain, which will drive the true joint chain, which will drive the mesh. Um, that was a mouthful. All right, so we want to do a point constraint from the left reverse foot joint to the left leg IK because we want the IK to move with the reverse foot joint. The reason why we're doing this is because we're going to get it to where we can turn and twist the uh, reverse foot at these, at their, um, at, at, at all these different joint locations uh, so we can get all this movement, uh, like stomping out cigarettes or, you know, like twisting your foot, maybe if you're shuffling every day. Um, and uh, you know you wouldn't normally be able to get these movements because you can't have a child joint move a parent joint. So we're kind of doing this like this hack setup to get um, the t to allow us to animate the way that we want to animate. So again, we're going to grab the left RF ankle, shift select the left leg IK, and do a point constraint. Make sure that you have free or maintain offset on. Um, it shouldn't matter too much for this, but it'll um, it's just a good thing to to keep on. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and test that. Um, let's see, it, notice it pulls with it, kind of funky. That's just because the other ones aren't set up right now. Um, all right, so now we are going to do a, uh, excuse me, point constraint. Now, now we're gonna have a couple of different constraints. I'm gonna go ahead and hide my geometry layer because that's it's bugging me. Um, all right, the reason we, we do a point constraint from this joint to the IK because rotate plane IKs can't take rotation um, information. Uh, and, we, and we only really need to get movement um, out of this rotate plane IK because we're going to have a pull vector up here later. However, single chain IKs can take rotate information. And remember how we bound the skin earlier? The reason for that is that if we... Uh, I'm going to just do um, a point constraint from the ball to this single chain IK and notice what happens here. Um, if I try and oops, if I try and grab this joint right here, 
the, on the reverse foot and rotate it, this doesn't rotate. I'm, I'm rotating on this axis, but this block right here, it's just kind of like sliding back and forth. That's not what we want. We actually want rotation. So we need to do a, um, a, a, a parent constraint. So we can give that single chain IK rotation information. So I'm gonna undo back and I have my left RF ball and left um, ball IK selected and I'm just gonna do parent constraint. Now when we rotate this joint, notice we actually get twisting with the mesh, which is what we want. All right, so then finally for the uh, toe, we're going to do um, from the RF toe to the IK, and we're going to do a orient constraint. And this, this matters later on because we're going to do kind of something special for the toe. Um, and so then if we test that out, there we go, stomping out a cigarette, pretty snazzy. All right, um, notice also like it, it might kind of flip out like that. Um, actually, this is why you don't move joints uh, more than what you have to test. Remember how I said um, they'll kind of break eventually? That's why you test it once and then you put it back. Don't ever touch it again. Um, so again, I just need to do that constraint again orient constraint and I'm going to just assume that it works because I don't want it to break again. All right, so after that orient constraint on the, um, uh, sorry, on the uh, uh, toe, we want to actually connect the, um, the actual control curves to this. So I'm going to grab the left uh, ball control and grab the left um, reverse foot uh, ball joint. And then I'm going to do an orient constraint on it. So constrain, oops, orient constraint with the option box. Maintain offset, very important. All right, so let's test that once. It works. And now I'm going to do the same thing to this, uh, from the toe control to the reverse foot joint right there. Orient constraint, and that works. All right, but you'll notice that our, our ball doesn't really, doesn't go with it. We're going to solve that later. All right. Um, now, uh, one, one extra thing that we're going to do is that it would be nice if we could get some toe tap action in here. So the way that we're going to do that is we're going to grab this control and do a point constraint on the IK. So with the ball, it was basically a parent constraint from the joint to the IK because um, we didn't have any, we didn't need this extra movement that we need on the toe. So we want to do a point constraint from the control curve to the IK. And what that's going to allow us to do is actually get this movement that we want from the toes like that. We still have all of the, uh, the rotation, everything like that going, um, but it would be kind of nice if the ball actually rotated with the toe everything like that. So to get that, we kind of need to uh, do some grouping and do some more constraints on it. All right, so I'm going to grab my ball control and go, going to group it and call that just left ball um, control underscore GRP. And I'm going to do the same thing for the toe control. Oops left toe underscore control underscore grp and the reason why I'm making these groups is because an object can have a pivot point and a group can have a pivot point um, and we kind of need to have this buffer object so that we can move the actual objects but have the group that the objects in be controlled by something else um, if we just had the object being controlled by something else, we wouldn't ever be able to move the object because it would, it's kind of like it's getting input from something else, so it, it wouldn't let us tweak it. But if you do this kind of grouping trick that we're going to do, it's going to allow us um, kind of like an object to move with another object, but still be able to move that object. And I know that sounds really complicated, but um, you guys will be able to see what I'm talking about when I do those constraints in a second. All right, so. Let's go ahead and move the pivot point for the ball to the toe because we want this to kind of move with, we're going to constrain the ball group 
to the toe controller so that it moves kind of like this. All right, um, and our, uh, let's see, the toe control, um, that group can be the ankle, um, the, the pivot point uh, of the ankle. The reason for that is this toe controller will, uh, the group of the toe will be controlled by the main foot control. All right, so let's go ahead and set up this ball group. So we're going to select the toe controller, control select the uh, ball group, and then we're going to do a, um, let's see, I think it's, uh, it is an orient constraint. All right. The reason why it's orient is because this, this toe controller still can move the toes like that, and we don't want it to move the ball around when we do that. We only want to orient control like that. But notice we have all this stuff working. The reason why it kind of like doesn't, it doesn't flip where it should is it's just an interpolation error that Maya sometimes gets. As soon as you hit zero on here on any one of these, it'll snap back. So if you have animation on this, it'll, it'll always look correct. It's just because we don't have any keyframes on this that it kind of, um, it has some trouble going back. You'll get the same problem with pull vectors, um, but it's nothing to worry about. All right, so now let's finally grab the toe control group, oh, sorry, the foot control, and then uh, control select the toe, the toe control group, and we're going to do a parent constraint because we want to move with it. All right, now when we move this, everything should be set up except for the ball controller. See how the ball controller stays put? We need to have that kind of like always move with the reverse foot joint chain. Um, and the way that we get that is, I'm going to just undo back and hit zero so everything kind of fixes itself. Um, and that's zero in the channel box, by the way, on any one of those attributes. But we want kind of this control, since this control will always just kind of move with the foot and we're only controlling rotation of it, we can actually say, hey, have, click on the reverse foot joint, click on the controller, and then do a um, point constraint. And what that's going to do is that's going to make the controller always move with the joint. So let's move this around. Let's test it out. That works correctly. We're going to go ahead and move this. This, this works how we want it to. I can even wiggle the toes. Um, I can put this in a weird rotation and I can even move the ball around with it. Notice how when I move the toes, it actually holds that rotation. That's, that's achieved by getting that buffer object, the group buffer object. And then I can even move everything as a whole and rotate around. Um, this, this setup for the reverse foot uh, just allows you to kind of like grab the object and place it where you want. You know, you don't really have to think, oh, I need to move it in the X, then maybe in the Y. It's kind of, uh, it's, it's kind of like you just grab it and move it. You don't really have to deal with any channel box attributes. Um, so that's, that's my uh, reverse foot setup. Um, I, uh, I, I was talking to a couple of friends and, and they said, hey, like I got, I got to through all your tutorials and I, I kind of, you know, just ran out of stuff to watch. You know, I, I, was, I was looking for more information. Um, well, if you guys have anything that you want to know about in Maya, um, any tutorials that you want want me to make, if um, uh, you guys have specific topics that you're interested in but don't really know where to start. Um, I, I know a little bit, I, I know basic knowledge about a little bit of everything in Maya. So if there's something that I can help you guys out with, then I can definitely point you in the right location. Um, but again, just remember when you're rigging, stay very organized with, uh, um, with your outliner. Uh, save often and just be sure about what you're constraining um, and what you're actually moving around. Um, but uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. And again, I'll put, these, I'll put these files up there so you can grab them, start and to finish final file. But thanks so much for watching, guys. Later.